We're going to go on to our third and final f feature story for Sunday Live tonight. And this story took us to Dar es Salaam and where we met one of man who's arguably one of the Tanzania's wealthiest businessmen and philanthropists. But it wasn't always that way for Reginald Mengi. He grew up poor, destitute, and with little hope for the future. But today, despite his immense wealth, Mengi insists on giving back. And he's written his autobiography to help inspire the next generation of Africans. Here's the story of Reginald Mengi. From grass to grace. It is early morning in the Tanzanian commercial capital, Dar es Salaam. And billionaire industrialist Reginald Mengi is doing what he does best, getting a head start on the day. It is a routine the 75-year-old has adopted for the last quarter century. An hour a day on the treadmill, seven days a week. The treadmill, by the way, can be used as a metaphor for Mengi's life. Consistency, sometimes an uphill task, never giving up. Now, our travels this week have taken us to the Tanzanian commercial capital, Dar es Salaam. We're here in one of the upmarket leafy neighborhoods known as Kinondoni. And we're here to do a story on one of the country's wealthiest businessmen and philanthropists, Reginald Abraham Mengi. Now, he's in his 70s right now, and he has interest in everything from media to publishing to consumer goods. But it always wasn't that way. He was born very poor. But you know what? He built himself up. In fact, he has a new book, his autobiography, entitled, I Can, I Must, and I Will. We're going to talk to him about that, his life, life in Tanzania, and also on the continent. Follow me. Hi, Jeff. How are you, sir? Yeah, thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. What is that way? Salam, Jeff. Salam. Shikamo. Karibu. Karibu, sir. Jeff. Did you build this yourself? Yes, yeah. You built it? Yes. But you know, a lot of people think Mr. Mengi uh, was born in money. We were born rich and wealthy. But that's not the case. You know, when I tell people, I, was, I said my life in a mad heart. Uh, which is uh, rats, cockroaches, and everything that can be associated with poverty. But, and also a cow, we had one cow in the family. So I'm coming from what people, because I live in the Maskino Kutupo. Maskino Kutupo. And that's why you're very passionate about helping the poor, isn't it? Yes. Is that why? You know, deep in my heart, I don't think I'm rich. I'm, I'm just poor, like many other poor people. Because I believe that whatever I have belongs to God. So how can a, a poor person like me, who has got nothing, I can be arrogant? Because you're the Lord and Yes, yeah. Sometimes what and how they think they've got everything because of their power. It's not true. Yeah. But what, uh, if someone could ask you, what keeps you so humble? What keeps you grounded, despite your wealth? And we know you're a wealthy man, but what keeps you grounded? You know, John, have you been to a funeral? Have you, have you seen a rich man or a powerful person dig in the grave? Finally, it is the poor who give you a, a dig of your, your grave. And when people are, and the rich don't even cry and show their tears, they don't remain strong. But the poor man will, will dig a grave, will bury you, and when he cries, the tears will be seen. Yeah. So, so, so I, I love the poor because those are my friends, even at the last moment. And of course, that's where I'm coming from. 
poverty. And that's why you talk about in your book, which is, by the way, a fascinating autobiography, uh, I can, I must, I will. Explain what that means. No, it means um, <clears throat> if you just say, I can, even if there's no solution to be, you know, even if you don't have a solution uh, immediately, your mind will create a solution for you. But if you say, I can't, your mind, your brain will say, you, 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 you don't respect me, you don't trust me, so nothing's going to happen. So anything in this life which you want to achieve must start with, I can. And say, I must, I will. And you believe that philosophy? Very much so. Because I know what is done to me. From extreme poverty to, to what, what, what I am now. It is that philosophy, believe in God, and all be, will be possible. Absolutely. You see, you know, uh, Jeff, when, when God created us in his image, he gave us a very powerful brain. He gave us a power to do anything. But unfortunately, human beings use their only five percent of their brain. The rest is, is, is idle. So can you imagine now, if you're using 5%, and you can do what you've done, you've done in this life. Suppose you're using 50%, 80%, 90%, which is possible, and that's what we are supposed to use that, that brain fully. But, um, but we are too lazy. And we don't believe, many people don't believe God gave them power. So what I would do now to do is I'm swayzy, swayzy, swayzy. God is going to punish us. The book was launched with a lot of fanfare in the Tanzanian administrative capital, Dodoma, about two months ago. Among the guests, Tanzanian President John Pombe Magufuli and hundreds of invited guests and dignitaries. So, I want to play chess. A short while later, it's time for breakfast with his wife Jackie and six-year-old twin sons Jaden and Ryan. A rare occasion for a man who spends most of his time in the office or on the road. The Holy Spirit, amen. God, thank you for our food. Blessed to the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Reginald Abraham Mengi grew up poor in the village of Machame on the foothills of Mount Kilimanjaro, some 1,400 kilometers from Dar es Salaam. His father bought and sold goats for a living. Getting an education was an impossible dream for the young Mengi. His family simply couldn't afford it. Today, Mengi's empire stretches the length and breadth of Tanzania and beyond. His group of companies is known as IPP, and they range from mining to manufacturing to media, including a string of private television and radio stations and nine newspapers. Mengi was married for many years to Regina Mengi and had three children, but that union ended in divorce several years ago. He remarried seven years ago to a former winner of the annual Miss Tanzania pageant. You know I'm crazy He says he owes his success to being able to survive successive governments in Tanzania's young democracy and to his equally young wife. So how did you two meet? He should tell the story. <laughs> you know, you said, um, did we miss Tanzania? Uh, open her eyes. I, I was one of the beneficiaries of those new eyes. <laughs> Because those eyes saw me. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm thank, I thank God. That you were able to see me. Yeah. <laughs> you never had met her anyway. No. Right? I, I, I knew of her. I, I heard of her. We first met in, in London. We had gone to London for some days. She had um, a concert. You know, I was concert performing there. Birmingham. And uh, when this, we got off this band. I was, going to, I was staying over in London, she was going to Birmingham. So I said, well, when you are in UK, can we meet? So I gave, it, I gave her a day to come from Birmingham to London to meet with me. <laughs> she never turned up. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't turn up. Yeah, but you know, 
in a way we, we are similar in in seeing things positively. And um, I kept on calling her. She did respond by phone, but not f physically meeting. And uh, she did. She had a uh, uh, concert. Um, okay. When we came back to Tanzania, then I kept on chasing her <laughs> until eventually she accepted to to take my date. We met. He's actually dedicated his autobiography partly to his wife for having given him a new lease on life. In, 2020, in 2010, I met Jacqueline Baliwe, now my loving wife and mother to our amazing twin boys, Jaden and Ryan. Jacqueline has brought a new breath of fresh air into my life. Listen to this now. She's every reason for my living. brought a fresh breath to your life, yeah, huh? Yes. Huh? Yeah, if yeah. it wasn't for her, what would you be doing? Because we're dead. Mengi's net worth has been estimated at more than half a billion US dollars. And his recent entry into cement production, as well as the motor vehicle assembly industry, should see that net worth climb even higher. But he insists wealth is not everything. We, we think, um, you know, having a lot of money is a way of uh, developing or, or moving forward. It's not so. You can have all the money in the world and still become a failure. Of course, you will miss it. If you lose the money, you will squander it. You won't do anything useful with it. Mengi insists his goal isn't to become East Africa's richest man, but to use his wealth to inspire others to be the best that they can be and for Tanzanians and Africans to take charge of their collective destinies. You know, there are people who are so negative about life. They always say, see the bad side of things. But we don't, we don't behave that way. We, we see positivity in, in everything. So, sir, I can see opportunities here. For two of us, we say yes, we can see big opportunities. Certainly, given the current president, we think that's not just the right place for us. I'm going to copy you. I'm not going to copy you, because that move, I know it's copying, right? Meanwhile, back in the Mengi household, the twins are busy putting daddy's vision into play. Can you do anything this life? Yes. Why? Because I can, I must, I will. What does that mean? It means you can do it and you won't give up. Oh, man. You guys are smart, huh? Jeff Koenenge, Citizen Television, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania.